Welcome to the Shale Hills Research Watershed. We've driven about 25 minutes southwest of Penn State's main campus to one of the university's recreational areas called Stone Valley. We're at the beginning of the course and the reason we've come here is because the Shale Hills Watershed is one of three critical zone observatories that was recently funded by the National Science Foundation to focus on interdisciplinary science in the critical zone. Let's take a short walk up into the drainage and consider some of the details of critical zone science. We've walked about a hundred yards up the drainage and stopped here so that I can remind you what the critical zone is. We define the critical zone as the thin veneer at Earth's surface that spans from the top of the vegetation canopy all the way down through the soils and bedrock and surface water and into the groundwater that freely circulates beneath the surface deep below our feet. This metal well casing beside me penetrates 80 feet into the subsurface and provides us with direct access to that groundwater, the base of the critical zone. Now I'd like to demonstrate to you the truly interdisciplinary nature of critical zone science by showing you some of the different instruments that are deployed here. Soil scientists in our group make detailed descriptions of the soils and the depth to the underlying coherent bedrock. And here you can see a soil pit that's been dug for that purpose. The soil scientists also use a variety of instruments to study the soil pore waters and the moisture and temperature content of the soils throughout the seasons. And we'll show you some instrumentation that's used for that purpose next. Recall that I mentioned the interdisciplinary nature of critical zone science. These PVC tubes that you see before me allow the geochemists in our group to access and sample pore waters contained within the soils. And it's the study of the chemistry and chemical processes that occur here that allow us to understand the chemistry of the critical zone at this site. And we'll refer more to this in our water unit later in the semester. This solar powered data logger provides continuous recording capability for the various soil moisture and soil temperature probes that are deployed throughout the basin. This data is being collected as we speak and analyzed by graduate students back at the main campus. Geologists and geomorphologists in our group are interested in the various processes of erosion that occur within this watershed. Imagine that 10,000 years ago a thick and vast ice sheet existed just 40 miles from here. And so this entire basin was frozen solid and very little erosion occurred at that time. Since then though, the landscape has thawed and erosion has occurred. And so it's the processes of erosion that have occurred since that thawing that we're interested in. One of these processes is called tree throw. And here you can see this root ball behind me from this recently fallen tree. And it's this process of churning the soil and exposing it to rainfall and erosion that we're interested in. And we'll return to thinking about processes like this during our landform unit later in the semester. In the near future, foresters and plant pathologists within our research group will erect scaffolding to provide them access to the upper levels of the canopy behind me. And these, these studies will focus on understanding the various fluxes of nutrients from the soils into the vegetation, as well as root-specific processes in the subsurface within the critical zone. We'll refer more to these processes in our biota unit much later in the semester.
the hydrologists and civil engineers in our group use data collected here at this weir dam to understand seasonal variations in surface water flow eventually for the purposes of modeling the hydrology of this basin. Notice the angle of the structure and the notch. These are very precisely made for the purposes of accurately recording the height or stage of the stream and the flow of the stream at this point. Well that completes our introduction to the Shale Hills Research Watershed. Remember that this is one of three recently established critical zone observatories in the United States built specifically for the purposes of studying the critical zone. And we'll return to think in detail about many of the processes I've briefly introduced to you today later and throughout this semester. Mm -hmm.